ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Welcome to this uh, large panel discussion on the Art Mill Museum Commission Artist. Um, on this uh, discussion, we will sh we will divide um, the convention the what the, the one hour we have together in two parts. The first part, all the artists here. <coughs> I will let Mariam to introduce. Uh, uh, will show an extract of the work you can uh, show in the Art Mill Museum exhibition. And after we uh, we will have, let's say, 20 minutes for question and answer. Thank you, Adrian. Um I'd just like to say thank you all for coming. I can see Catherine and Caroline, uh, the director and curator for the Art Mill Museum here, and many of the people that have helped us put this exhibition together. I'm not sure how many of you have seen the exhibition, but uh, Art, Mill Art Mill Museum 2030 has two parts, one in the current flower mill building, uh, where that holding is still operating the uh, the mill, and they're soon to move out so that they leave space and room for the Art Mill Museum to be um, built and, and restoring the old building. And then the second space is in Al Najada, and that highlights the garden aspect of the uh, museum, the future museum. And through that, you really sh it shows the expansiveness of this large project that they're working on. It's much bigger than just a museum. There's a, a whole creative village uh, part of it and a garden and the museum itself. Um, and if you've also um, seen the exhibition, it doesn't really highlight the collection so far, but this is, you know, um, still to come. It's uh, still confidential, but hopefully you'll be able to see aspects of the collection in the future as well. So the exhibition in the warehouse actually highlights the work of uh, some of the artists here. Uh, Ali Kasma sitting beside me, Shayma Tamimi uh, next to him, uh, Yasmin Ibn Abdurrahman and uh, Amal Murtah's work uh, is shown in the warehouse. Uh, and then uh, the work of Amal Murtah and uh, Hamra Abbas are also showing in, in Najada. So um, we'll let each of them uh, speak a, a little bit about uh, their work and then we'll have a, a Q&A as well. So I'll let Ali speak about his uh, film. Very shortly, we'll show a short uh, excerpt from the film that you can see at the exhibition. I was approached by the team, the curatorial team, uh, a few years ago, two years ago, to make a, maybe a work on this flour mill. And I work a lot with uh, spaces where transformations take place. Art studios, dance studios, industrial places, craftsmen's ateliers, things like that. Many times I worked with... Uh, spaces that are going through changes. I've uh, filmed in museums as they were about to open. Uh, so this came very naturally to me that this space, which will be transformed into a cultural center from an industrial center, kind of in a way ties in my practice and it was a very good opportunity and the kind of the stars aligned for me at that moment. And here is this work. Uh, without much... Uh, lengthening it and uh, I will just like to show a piece from my work and then maybe to in the Q&A you guys can ask questions if you have any because I see that we don't have so much time and there's a lot of us here so we will show the video now so if you can switch the sound to video and uh, we'll do that.
I think maybe if you'd like to speak a little bit about um, how you approach this commission and the way that you've uh, chosen to document the process of the mill before, you know, the way that you've just approached this idea of archiving uh, a time. Well, the first time I saw the building, I was really attracted to how it is. Uh, it has these rhythmic structures inside. It's always shaking to sort out the, the flower, I guess. And this made me feel that I was inside a kind of an organic structure. And I, I started from there. As you can see, it starts with that too, this kind of uh, like a heartbeat, but a faster than human heartbeat. And I approached the whole thing as a unity where something comes in and something comes out. And I followed that process, and I followed the, the machines and the people, the, the cold parts and the hot parts, and I approached it as I would approach a kind of a unified being, almost an organic, um, yeah, I think it was Yasmina who said a beast or something like that. And uh, it, has a, it has a lot of uh, uh, parts that are interlocking, that are a continuation of, of one another, and I like this rational organization in things. Uh, rationality is something we sometimes don't find in life, but in, in buildings like this you find a lot of it, and it's kind of nice to see this uh, tension between the chaos and uh, the, the human desire to form things, and nature uh, kind of opposing that and what it creates. So that's how I approached it very quickly. And if we continue this approach, maybe we can give the, the, the talk to, to Shema, who I think you, you go closer to this question, not only the flour mill, but as well the bakery. Mm -hmm. So there's a strong place and for symbolic importance, because it gives uh, the, the bread for, let's say, Doha and Qatar. And maybe you can introduce your, your work on this very strong question of bakery and, and the bread in Doha. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, Shema Tamimi and um, I was very honored to be um, able to work on a project of this large scale. I think this was my first commission, um, you know, that, that uh, sort of comes from an institution like Qatar Museums and I, uh, you know, obviously was quite excited about approaching something like this. Um, I normally like to photograph um, or sort of study food from an anthropological perspective. And um, the flour mill, you know, having come my way was just like Ali Kazma said, like the stars aligned. So I approached this project from sort of two sort of points of view. I did a two part series. One was called A Nation's Bread, where, oh, it's showing. Okay. Uh, do I continue or just pause? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Um, yeah, so the, the first series is called The Nation's Bread, and um, it's a, sort of a close-up look into the bakery that um, supplies Doha with all of its bread. And, um, you know, just going into that building, as well as the flour mill, I was quite fascinated by how the, like, the monumentous operation was running sort of very robotically, and at the same time, there's you know all these different rooms that have a different purpose, and just to think about how making bread in an industrial way, sort of juxtaposed with trying to make bread at home, and there's a very different relationship with industrial processes and sort of doing something uh, from a more um, human perspective or like a smaller kitchen. Uh, so I chose to focus on that relationship between machinery and um, the people behind. Um, you know, running that operation. I'm not sure what photos are being shown right now, but um, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, so then we move on to Lugmet uh, Aish, which um, kind of translates to a morsel of life. And that was the second part, um, which is a series of 30 photographs where I focus on studying the relationship between flour and water from the lens of every country, or at least the, the sort of countries that, um, you know, people who are living in Doha that Qatar hosts. And um, this one was very interesting because um, in, in the beginning, I was trying to look at bread in terms of like its shape and size and how, um, you know, all of the breads that we have, um, 
have different sort of shapes and textures, but then as I zoomed in, and I'm, as you can see, um, it, it just became close, uh, it became a lot more apparent that um, there's different aesthetic that also go into it. And I thought that zooming in closer would be a lot more interesting that, than looking at bread from a sort of you know, zoomed out perspective. Like I think a big part of what I wanted to do is to kind of make people guess what was going on in the photo than just being very obvious about it. And um, yeah, that was um, something that I also wanted to do was take it away from like a very site specific uh, location and sort of transfer the project into my studio, which was my kitchen. Um, yeah. Thank you, Shema, for sharing both series with us here. And I think we'll leave the questions uh, after we uh, hear from Yasmina and your film. The project come for the beginning for another list. It was a project for uh, like a portrait, metaphorical portrait about my grandmother and um, my uncle around a construction. Uh, it was the last uh, construction architecture from the Hadid in Rabat in Morocco. And when we talk about me for this commission, for me it was really um, um, natural because it talk about another beast for me, uh, like an, uh, a nest. Because when I, I come in the in the Qatar and I see the place for the the greenery place for for the, the mill for the, the the city and the people, um, I turn around and I feel it's like a beast or inside a beast. Uh, and if it's okay for you, I just I want to read a little text. And you can see a, a short um, a film. Uh, Rock is a metaphorical portrait of the flower mill in this current state at the granary of the country. Rock is the mythological birth of prey related to poet Farid Uddin Attar's the, the conferences of the birds to the creation of the mythical Michi Simor. It's like a, a phoenix too in Europe, and which appear in so many Arabic and Indian and Persian tales. And um, in my project, I like um, uh, to to speak about uh, stories like a, a new tale, uh, a modern tale. And rock is an attempt to uh, capture something of the disappearing and mutating meal. It references to history and the present day of a land in mutation by means of the collection of traditional gesture from the Ari roll of the ship importing the grain from Asia to the grain being stored, 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 stored and we work, studied and tested. Dreamlike and repetitive mechanisms transport us into an hypnotical visual and sonic trance echoing the migration of humans through the movements, passage, and transit of the birds. The building is seen as, as a nest or a living organism producing grains that feed. There is a transit movement towards the, de the demolition of the building, a fall of rebel and reconstruction. I see this film project uh, as an allegory of the nesting, waiting for the next journey of flight, a dreaming like journey in a concrete body revealed by the caressing light, the powers of head, the visiting of the sun for the day to the night, an eternal cycle is isolating the film like a skin market with iron. Thank you. We are showing the video next time.
very much. Yes, yes, Mina. Uh, we you were talking about tale and maybe another narrative. Uh, you as well are very involved in the question of narrative and uh, <coughs> this symbolic relationship with uh, with Ukraine itself. We, we show very well. You show very well. Can you Amal? Can you tell us a little about you the process of in which in which way you 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 understand this commission and how you, you what, what is the narrative you, you made for this for you for the film you, you were doing um, so i come from a uh, background in filmmaking uh, documentary and fiction and this is sort of the first time i work on something um, of this kind and when i started to um, sort of dig deeper into the flower mill and especially after we visited the site, I sort of felt that the, the, the mill embodies a uh, place in my life and, and in societies, in the context of a society that sort of resembles a mother, a giving mother. Uh, and for me, especially, it reminded me of my grandmother. And as I sort of began to explore um, the narrative became clearer, and it was for me it was about uh, the transition that happened between the process, the organic process of milling flour um, traditionally, uh, to the process of uh, factory. Um, there was sort of like a handover from Dagil uh, Hab or Raha, which women uh, used to perform during a ritual in Ramadan or uh, at various times in the year. And that was sort of that responsibility was sort of uh, passed on to this to this mill, and this film is sort of about ex exploring that relationship. Thank you. So, show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Emil. Turn on in a second. Okay. So I asked for a very short clip because I'd love for you to all visit the exhibition and watch the whole film. It's, it's uh, quite spectacular. It's, uh, it has a whole storyline of, of the grandmother. And um, yeah, so thank you for that. Uh, little teaser. And uh, Hamra Abbas, if you'd like to maybe we shift gears a little bit where this is less of a commission of the um, documenting or an approach to um, the flower mill itself, but actually of a different type of commission of the garden. And so maybe you can tell us a little bit about your process and your commission. Um, I was um, asked to uh, make this piece two years ago. And uh, I think it's connected more to the idea of the museum garden. And the piece is called Flowers, Gardens of Paradise 2. And um, when I was asked to make this piece, it was the biggest piece I had done until then. So it was very exciting for me and also very experimental at the time. This particular work is actually based on a 17th century fresco painting in Lahore, um, which represents a, a kind of a paradisical garden which is a common theme in other historical places from Lahore, from the imperial architecture, from the Mughal era. 
And um, what is happening in this particular image is that um, it's like an eclectic, a hybrid kind of an image, uh, which is um, where you can see a bunch of uh, elements that are sourced. It has a very European flavor. So um, the way the piece is made is with a technique called marble inlay. Uh, locally, it's known as Parchin Kari, but it is based on an Italian technique of Pietra Dura. So in the 17th century, um, a, a particular kind of floral tradition was making its way into the Mughal court. Uh, but at the same time, um, it, it was making its way into the Mughal court and was in some ways replacing the more uh, favored Islamic geometric patterns of the time. They were still being used, but a floral tradition was making its way um, in tandem with um, with uh, um, 17th century Flemish floral tradition that was happening at the same time um, in different places in Europe, like in um, like Italian engravings and Pietra Dura in in Florentine. Um, so in this, you can see there are uh, there are references to uh, flowers that are not even local to India. So clearly, uh, the Mughal and the artists of the Mughal court were taking were open to borrowing from the Western tradition. So they were taking the technique, but also uh, the subject matter was uh, being evolved at the time. Um, I can show some images of the work being made. So here you can see some images of this work was when it was being made. Um, when it was being made, um, what I basically do is I buy stone in different uh, capacities, like from slabs to actual raw stones, and then I section them into slices, and then those slices are uh, categorized in numbers and tonalities and shades and colors, and uh, then they're taken into their different formations to make uh, to make uh, uh, to um, kind of work with the drawings that I make, which has have numbers on it, and then numbers are matched with colors, and so these shapes are made, and uh, they're all cut and 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 shaped by hand, and then they are um, so there are different shapes. Here you can see uh, flowers made with lapis lazuli, which is a semi-precious stone. Uh, that comes from Badakhshan, from Afghanistan, which interestingly enough makes its way into Pakistan through the Afghan uh, Park border, and uh, sold in a in a famous Namak Mandi Bazaar of Peshawar, where I buy it. Um, here you can see different stages of the piece. The when the piece is being made, um, you you see you don't see the final image because it is covered with a lot of chemical, but also uh, the the stone is not polished, so the actual image is up, um, is surfaced only when the stone is polished because you can see stone in a certain way, but then it is that when the top layer is is polished, another color or another tone or texture may appear from underneath. So, yeah, some more images. It's it's almost like a relief when it is being done until until the next. Yeah, here you can see the the rough image when it is covered with grout and and uh, and is like a relief. Next, um, yeah, the clouds. Next, and the um, the image just before it is polished. Here you can see one image where I'm actually inlaying a stone in the base stone. So the base stone is carved with hand, and then the the the, the cutout is placed inside the stone, and therefore called marble inlay. Thank you, um, Hamra, for uh, sharing the process of how you create these uh, beautiful kind of tapestry-like um, sculptures. Uh, and you can see the work in the Najada house as well. So maybe I'd, I'd like to kind of open up the question of uh, to you, Shema, about the uh, process of the commission and how you... Is it different to you creating your own work? Like, how was the approach to commission that you had uh, compared to the work that you usually do? I try as much as possible to try and tell stories from my perspective. And with this commission per se, um, I mean, normally I do that from a very personal perspective also, like through my films, through some of the images that I share, through my body of work, uh, working with, you know, Afaq and the Magnum Foundation. Uh, with this one specifically, um, 
I tried to bring in the personal in a way to the concept of working with the flower mill. And um, one of the things that made a lot of sense to me was to approach it from the lens of flower being this very universal thing that, uh, you know, is a, not just a metaphor, but, you know, it is a form of sustenance for humanity. And, uh, you know, given that Doha, for example, is also a country that hosts people from um, different nationalities, we have a huge immigrant population here. And um, me being an immigrant myself, I wanted to approach it from that lens. Hence, having wanted to work with exploring the different forms of what flower and water does um, in the, the way that heat is also applied to it. So the result was basically, you know, these close-up photographs of, um, you know, textures and shapes and sizes and colors even that go from like the range of um, brown and all of its panettone <laughs> scales. Um, yeah, that was that was one of the ways in which I tried to bring in my sort of angle. Um, and it was quite a refreshing one because I had to think of it from like a very sort of outside the box rather than going inwards, um, which is what I also try to do in a way. Thank you. I, I could sense how you still went to, you could tell that it was your work and that documentary approach to things, but also very personal in what you came out with, which is very different to uh, the rest of the uh, artists as well, where... Um, you could see your uh, experience in Doha through that work as well and what you wanted to show. Well, working also, I think I tried to do that by also um, picking the kind of lens, which was a macro lens, kind of going a little bit deeper into a more personal approach. Um, so yeah, I, um, I do actually encourage you all to also visit because these pictures don't do justice just looking at it from... Um, a screen and, it's just a and also uh, what is very interesting is that when we had the discussion I think even with UML was that um, none of us really knew that it was a working mill before this project uh, and it's right in front of us on the corniche you know we all pass by it every day and none of us really realized that this is a working factory that's you know, um, feeding the whole country, you know, this grain is then shared with the whole country as well. And so maybe, um, you know, you can, I think Yasmina, you mentioned something about, um, you know, everyone eats bread, you know, this idea that, uh, you know, the whole country eats bread, whether, where, wherever you're from, whether you're rich or poor, or from what, which social status. And I'd like to also just kind of learn more about your approach to the film because it's very different to how others have interpreted the the mill you know in this like beast nature it's it, you know it can be uh quite abstract and, and the sounds are a large element of that and maybe the way that you approached the sound that you created with the film for me the the approach was very like an animal too because I talk about a beast, but we are uh, we live together with the beast, um, and in the the meal, um, for me, so my, my first love when I, I beginning to to practice is the matière, and the matière is like the sound matière and the the visual matière, like picture, because I, I said all the time that the pellicule, the films, it's like an uh, uh, it's for me uh, a life. And it's attached and and take the uh, the uh, sensibility, but is sensible sensible to 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 the age and and it fix and it mark the uh, like a skin a real skin with the sun or other. And for me, in the meal, it was very important because you have a lot of dust and and this material is transform it. It's, it's a, a beginning like a stone, and it crushed it, and and it passed for the a lot of um, grains, and it's it's come to invis invisible too, and like an, like we mash and we eating something, and we passed and it, it, it took the rest or not, and I um, for me the meal too it was an. A matière for eating, but it's uh, another matière for dangerous matière because it's 
it's powder and like a phoenix, you can to grow and to up and to go and and to go to to something else, some um, uh, an, another uh, monster, an, another uh, form. And for me, the grain it's very important for all, and the grain sound graining too, and it's composite, and I'm uh, I'm taking the sound like a, a, a um, like an a medicine or it's very stethoscopic sound and a microscopic, not micro but macroscopic sound. I reveal it and you can to 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 hear that directly, and it's composed like an um, um, a music or a composition uh, to the uh, to the uh, vivant for a, a life uh, form. Okay, a new life. For on a form, and and for me it was a, the um, you, see, you can see the frame, the totally frame for the, the the picture, and for me it was the um, the, the two eyes maybe for the the rock. These animals we can't see it because uh, we see you and you can see him, her, and you can interpretation and create your a new tale and. It's very sensitive um, experience, no? And okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, we, 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 are, we are talking a lot about narrative, about imagination, about metaphor, about knowledge as well, because I have the, the feeling that um, when I see all your, all your work, uh, it's, it brings knowledge about the, the meal, about the geographical situation of the mill, about the city of Doha, about the tradition, about uh, many aspects on which, in a way, because of your commission, the future transformation of the flower mill is rated and rooted little by little to this strong city and strong culture in Qatar. And in a way, I would like to ask you a question, Amal, because we are talking about, you are a filmmaker, right? And I need to mention that uh, your film was produced in collaboration with the Doha Film Institute. And in a way, talking together, I, I have the feeling that the traditional distinction between fiction and documentary is not relevant, really, in our discussion. What is your point of view on this question? There's always... Uh, blurred lines whenever it comes to my projects like some documentary have elements of fiction and some fiction has elements of documentary and this is why I like to sort of spread myself across multiple um, formats uh, and this is specifically it felt like I don't know is it experimental is it documentary is it fiction because it has elements of everything uh, together and it sort of creates a new um, format, or at least in my uh, work, that is uh, sort of unique to, to the situation uh, of this mill and, and the story of the uh, milling of the um, uh, grains. You, Ali, about the, the, the fiction and documentary, well, uh, uh, I was just reading something with uh, Ursula Le Guin, uh, the, the, the great uh, American writer, uh, woman writer, writes in uh, mostly science fiction form, and she was talking about how um, you try to approach truth in any way you can through art. And sometimes it's documenting, sometimes it's inventing, sometimes it's mashing the two together. And the truth always comes out to the specific methods you might choose and sometimes untruth comes out so i guess the, the question is about that the way you approach the material and fiction and non-fiction and invention they can all be the tools that we approach a kind of truth and in this way i think uh, i think it's very clear in cinema but it's also very clear in, in literature of late literature that this distinction is becoming 
a non-issue. Uh, we are trying to approach truth with any material that we can. And I'm sure this has a lot of things to do with our, with the, mo the moment we are living in our history and this complete, um, maybe too much that narratives bombarding us from each single person. But uh, I think a, a lot of artists, writers are trying to find a new way of approaching the truth without uh, uh, making this distinction. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Adi. I think maybe we can open up uh, for any questions that someone might have about um, the exhibition or to any of the artists. Yeah, thank you for the talk. Uh, how can you access the warehouse uh, bit of the exhibition? And for the museum itself, uh, uh, in 2030, uh, would you be retaining the uh, industrial equipment and uh, what what uh, repurposing for these elements uh, could take place if, if uh, it's available? Thank you. Well, it's, yes, it's true that we focus on the commission uh, tonight, but uh, from a, let's say the agenda or let's say something like the schedule. The, the flower mill, the current flower mill was built in 1996. Uh, it's still, because it's a, a very big factory, they, they need more space. And they are, the ZAD holding, which is, which is the name of the, of the company, is going to move in the Hamad port in, uh, let's say, one year, in one year and a, and a half. But so the, the process of moving is quite long. And then, all the question is, they are going to move, the factory is going to be an Hamad port, and then the transformation into a cultural space, uh, into a public space, uh, we will happen for probably five or six years of construction. So the, um, the division of time, something like that, one, uh, one year and a half, five years of construction, and after uh, the, the, the deliver of the of the museum in this plot. But what I need to mention, and what you can see, and what we see in the exhibition, is that uh, the architect, which are Elemental, a Chile stu uh, studio of architecture based in Chile, and the landscape designer, Vogt, landscape architect based in Zurich, used the identity of the, of the, of the grain silos as a DNA of the design. So in a way, the memory of this industrial site will remain in the wall themselves of the, of the silos and of the architecture, which, which will keep this identity of uh, the flower mill. Unfortunately, like just to directly answer your question, you aren't able to access anything outside of the exhibition space because it is a working mill and there are health and safety measures. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to do it. like people can't access that. Uh, but you do see elements of the industrial nature, and from what I've heard from the art mill team, they are keeping many elements in the in of that within the future museum as well. So um, to to visit the exhibition, you uh, the location is in the Museum of Islamic Art Park. So just when you go down from here, there's a shuttle every 30 minutes that can take you into the exhibition. So uh, this is actually the right place to be if you would like to visit the exhibition. There's a shuttle that would take you from here every 30 minutes into the space. Thank you. I was just talking about the flower mills being a very heavily guarded site. Uh, because obviously they're providing for the entire nation and um, in history there's many instances where um, God forbid poisoning was you know introduced through these mills and um, I wanted to you know publicly voice my appreciation for um, the the breadth of uh, approaches that you guys have brought to you know such an important site and and um, in all honesty I don't think it's a it's an easy task to kind of you know, look at something so industrial and so um, unique in its own manner 
and to kind of uh, bring out a creative uh, flavor to it. So, um, yeah, I appreciate all of you here. Hello, everyone. Thank you, um, uh, artists, for the very interesting talk. Well, my question is about the, 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 the very impressive artwork produced, if there's any significance to the future of the art mill, uh, having interpreted it as, as a heartbeat, as a life, as hospitality, something that gives nourishment, that in the future, which we are all excited about, that this will all end. Uh, was there also a consideration to produce these artworks that, yeah, they, they, it is what it is today and it will change in the future? Amal, would you like to maybe have a go at answering? Because it's usually hard to answer something not directed. So maybe. Yeah, I think um, part of why most of all of us are commissioned is to sort of like archive and, and in a way like create a more, a more like uh, make a more to, um, what's the to sort of like um, yeah exactly like to sort of create a, a film that lives after a uh, film sort of trans transforms into a museum. Everything is uh, in a state of transformation. It's just the, the, the rhythms are different, and then there are some moments when this transition becomes very apparent and sudden. And uh, the city is going through a very, very quick transformation, and it, the transformation of art mill is for sure a very, very important part of that. And uh, I think this is what this whole commission was about to, to make that kind of memory to preserve something uh, before before it becomes something else so all the works i think when you see the exhibition i, I think you might have uh, or maybe you will you will see that uh, there is a feeling of i think i don't remember who said it but it is almost maybe i think it was it is almost like yeah, an archive for the future it, it is holding something it will continue in another place but, but you know even if I'm looking at you, you are aging, you know, it's just another rhythm. And we, we as artists, or, or, or almost all, all of us as humans, are very attracted to this, to this changes. And then when it's sudden and it's visible as, as the one that's taking place in Art Mill, I feel it deserves a, a lot of thought and a lot of effort to, to at least preserve before it, as, as you say, changes. Yeah. I want to to say something. Um, I like uh, to to have a recording uh, with the other, uh, maybe a, not the last slide, but uh, a part of a slide because uh, I know maybe it's not that, but it was the second construction in Doha, no? Well, the first it was the Sheraton, no? The hotel, okay. and the second it was for for the food. The, First, it's what the construction for the house, like the uh, first construction for the old people, because the, the whole, the first metric, um, the metric, the first work, work, work for the women, it was the construction for the uh, roof. And, and for me, it was very difficult for writing this memory and this art archive for the future, because Qatar is a, 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 a young country, and yes, and what to say, it's, but to say, it's just that. Okay, uh, just that. 
I think that, um, thank you, I thank you, thank you very much for coming. And uh, just a few practical information, the exhibition opened today and it's until the 13th of March, 2023. And beside the two, um, the two sites, you can find their catalog, which some of, I don't know the word design, like, but which try to bring in the publication all this diversity of approach to the single object, which is a kind of catalog. Thank you very much.